Hello, Cross of Glory family. My name is Heather Osley, and this is the first day of Jotham's journey. Come along for the adventure with us. Darkness. Jotham pulled the scratchy gray blanket more tightly around his shoulders, but the wind still slithered down his neck. It was colder now that the sun had dropped below the bare hilltops behind him. Far off to his right was the salty sea where nothing lived, and just over that ridge in front of him, the one that formed the other side of the valley he was in, his family camped. <clears throat> they would be asleep now, warm and safe, inside the finest goatskin tents ever made. I would be too, Jotham thought, if only father weren't so stubborn. A devil's howl came from somewhere in the distance and echoed off the valley walls. A jackal, Jotham knew instantly, a wild dog. Far enough away as to not be a danger to his little herd of lambs, <clears throat> though on this particular night he had no lambs to worry about, still the sound stabbed at Jotham's heart like a knife. He sat perfectly still for several minutes, careful not to make even a breath of noise. One couldn't lie too cautious when jackals were about. The jackal howled again, closer this time, Jotham judged. The thought sent tingles spreading out from his spine, like a million ants biting his skin. Not that he was afraid, of course. He was Jotham of Jericho, after all, ready to fight jackals or snakes or bears to defend his flock. But still, a ten-year-old boy, alone, with only his tunic, his staff, and a little wool blanket, could be a very tempting meal for a hungry jackal. Jotham wedged himself a little deeper into the craggy rock. He didn't really like the thought of spending another cold night, spending another night in the cold, but it was worth it, wasn't it? Jotham wasn't quite so sure anymore. Everything had been fine until yesterday. Each morning, Jotham would gather his lambs, lead them to the drinking hole, and then to a small field of green grass where they could eat and play all day. In the evening, he'd bring them back to camp again to rejoin the rest of the flock. His older brothers would do the same with the bigger sheep. Only his brothers got to go to the fields that were bigger and farther away. Sometimes they even got to spend a whole night out with their flock, sleeping under the stars on goatskin mats that mother had made for them. They even got to take their meals with them, carrying them in special baskets that stacked on top of each other and tied together with a leather, leather thong. All Jotham ever got to do, or ever got, was a piece of bread and a chunk of dried meat, carried in a bag made from the stomach of a goat. A bag that was now empty, Jotham remembered, and his stomach let out a growl so loud he was afraid the jackal would hear. But then yesterday, everything had changed. Jotham had just picked up his lunch bag and hugged his mother when he heard his father, father talking to Jethro, Ephraim, Eleazar, his older brothers. Take your flocks to the valley of Hebron, his father was saying. You will find there a man, Zadok of Kadesh. Sell him the better tenth of your sheep. He will give you a fair price. At those words, Jotham's heart began to ache. The valley of Hebron? That was right next to the city of Hebron. His brothers were going to a city with thousands of people, a marketplace full of exotic foods and magical toys, a city with deep wells and brightly colored flags, and music that played all day and night. Hebron! Oh, how Jotham longed to go with his brothers to see the sights and to smell the smells of a city of wonders. In fact, he could almost taste. I'm going with them. The sound of Jotham's voice had shocked even himself. At his words, everyone stopped, then turned and stared at him. Finally, his father spoke. This task is for your brothers, Jotham. You are not ready yet to leave your mother's side. I'm going with them, Jotham had said again, his voice so loud and high that the sheep nearby began to wail in fright. It's not fair that they get to go to Hebron and I have to stay here. Jotham's father took a deep breath, then walked slowly toward him. Jotham tried to keep the fear he felt from showing on his face. His father was a big man, tall as a tree, it seemed, and strong. Jotham had once seen him wrestle a full-sized camel to the ground when it went mad from disease. 
But instead of raising his hand or his voice to Jotham, his father slowly knelt down on one knee to look eye to eye with him and placed his hand gently on Jotham's shoulder. Jotham, he said evenly, your time for journeys away from my tent will come soon, but it is not yet here. You will remain with me and tend to your lambs. Jotham fought to hold back the anger and tears. He knew the sting of his father's hand and did, did not wish to know it again. But this was so unfair. I want to go, he said, lips trembling. Yes, I know, his father answered. But you cannot. There are too many dangers, and your brothers have enough responsibilities without looking after you as well. Jotham wanted to yell at his father to say awful things that would make his father hurt as much as he did, but he dared not. So instead, he pushed aside his father's hand and turned and ran away. He ran to the water hole and then beyond it. He ran over the hills where he grazed his lambs, then over the other side until he could no longer see the tents of his father. And then he kept running. When he finally stopped, he sat down at the base of a gnarled tree and cried out his anger and frustration. You can't tell me what to do, he yelled into the wind. Then he decided then and there that he would not go back to his father's tent until his father could treat him like a man. And so he sat in the shade, waiting for nothing except time to pass and thinking angry thoughts about his father and brothers. When the sun was directly overhead, he took out the bread and meat that his mother had packed. He ate it all in the time it took for an ant to carry a single crumb to its nest a few feet away. After that, he started to walk among the rocks and cliffs and canyons, places he had never seen before. He practiced throwing rocks with his leather sling. He drew pictures in the dirt with a stick. And slowly, as his anger began to disappear, he became afraid. Not of bears or snakes or scorpions, but afraid of what he had done. Late in the afternoon, he began to hear his brothers and father far off in the distance calling his name. He wanted to answer, but he just couldn't bring himself to apologize. The voices continued throughout the evening, and each time he heard his name, another measure of guilt was sprinkled on his heart. But he could not answer. They would all laugh at him and tell stories of his foolishness, and so he kept quiet. Just before the sun dropped completely behind the cliffs, the voices had stopped. No one called his name any longer. The air became cold and damp, and Jotham longed to return to the fires of his father's tent. But then he thought of his brothers. They were on their way to Hebron by now, and this made Jotham angry all over again. Let them make their journey, he decided. I'll stay here and let father worry. I'll show him I'm big enough to take care of myself. But the night was long and held very little sleep for Jotham. When the sun finally peeked over the ridge to the east and began to calm the shivers that had shaken his body all night, he ached to feel his mother's hug and taste her morning stew. There was no anger in him any longer, only fear. He felt fear of the punishment he was sure to receive, and he had devised a plan. He would cross back over the great ridge and move closer to his father's tents, to the field where the lambs graze. His father would be sure to find him there. With a rock, Jotham would scrape his forehead until it bled, making it look as if he'd been attacked by thieves. He'd even throw his lunch bag and staff away to make his story seem true. Then he would lie there and pretend to be unconscious until his father came and found him. His father would have sympathy for Jotham and maybe punish him a bit less. Immediately, Jotham jumped to his feet to carry out his plan. It took most of the following morning to find his grazing field. Everything looked so strange from this side of the ridge. Once there, he found a hand-sized stone, but it was much harder to make an injury than he had imagined. The rough rock hitting his forehead really hurt. He finally managed to draw a little blood, and then he lay down to wait. And wait. And wait. But nobody ever came. As the sun began to set again, Jotham became angry once more. They didn't even care enough to come and look for me, he thought. Well, I'll show them. I'll just stay out here and let them worry. And so here he was now, pulling the scratchy gray blanket more tightly around his shoulders, his stomach grumbling and aching as it never had before, and listening to a jackal howl in the distance. Maybe I should just go back, Jotham thought now. 
There's food in my father's tent. All the punishment in the world would be worth it if I could have even a bite of bread. The jackal wailed once more, much closer now. Maybe father was right, Jotham thought. It is dangerous out here, and I could probably never keep up with my brothers on the long trip to Hebron. They're so much bigger and stronger. Suddenly, Jotham made a decision. He jumped to his feet, pulled the blanket around himself, and headed off across the valley toward his father's tents, watching his step in the moonlight. I will tell father I was wrong, he decided, and ask his forgiveness. I will take my punishment, and then I will eat. Yes, I will eat. The thought of his mother's bread and a thick slice of meat made Jotham's mouth water. I will eat and I will sleep by the fire, and tomorrow I will take my lambs to graze, just like always. As Jotham neared the watering hole, he actually began to smile, glad that his little journey was finally over. But then he came around the last of the hills and stopped dead in his tracks. His father's tents were gone. The broad field where they had camped was now bare. The fire pits were cold. The sheep pens were empty. They left me, Jotham thought. They didn't even care enough to come and look for me. He sat in the dirt and began to cry. He cried for what seemed like most of the night. He cried at the thought of being alone. He cried at the thought of being left behind. But mostly he cried at the thought that his father didn't love him enough to stay and look for him. He felt as if some rough, giant hand was crushing his heart between its fingers. Finally, still sobbing, Jotham stood and began to pick through the remains of the camp, hoping to find a corner of bread or a scrap of meat. His stomach ached ached as much as his heart, and he felt as empty and alone as a newborn lamb that had been separated from its mother. Finding no food or any trace of his family, Jotham slowly walked back to the watering hole. At least he could fill his stomach with water, he thought. Maybe it would make some of the pain go away. But just as he knelt to lap up the water, he noticed a pile of stones just off the path that led to the lamb's grazing field. Curious, he walked over and examined the pile in the moonlight. The ground around the stones was darker, and a funny smell hung in the air. It was blood, he suddenly realized, and then he saw it. Blood everywhere, and bits of fur and flesh leading off into the bushes, scuff marks as if something had been dragged away. Then he noticed that there was writing on the top stone in the pile, something scratched into its flat surface. Jotham could not read very much, only a few words that he had that had to do with the keeping of sheep, but there was one word that Jotham could read, and he gasped as he saw it now, written on that stone topping the pile. It was his name. Jotham, it said, What the other words said he did not know, but this one word was clear, and so was its meaning, on top of stones piled like this. They think I'm dead, Jotham wailed out. They think I was killed by some animal and dragged off to be eaten. And then he began to cry again, not a cry of anger anymore, and not a cry of loneliness, a cry of fear. I want my father, he cried, and fell with his face in the dirt, clutching his little blanket. I want my father, he screamed over and over, but there was no one there to hear him. Finally, after a very long time, he realized that his family wouldn't even be looking for him. It was he who would have to go and find them. But where would he look? Which way did they go? How long had they been gone? Jotham didn't know, but he knew he must search. He lay there next to the pile of stones that marked the place where his family thought he'd been killed. The scratchy gray blanket pulled tightly around himself, his face buried in the dirt. His crying turned to quick, stabbing sobs. I must look for my family. I must search until I find them, wherever they are, he thought. And somewhere, very close by, a jackal howled. So please join us for day two tomorrow.